Welcome back. We're leaving the city and taking the country road to the vineyards of Siran, a village in the appellation of Margot in the wine-producing region of Medoc, on the left bank of Bordeaux. The vineyards of Bordeaux are generally classified in two, those on the left of the Garonne River and those on the right bank of the Dordogne. On the gently rolling landscape of the right bank are historic appellations like Saint-Emilion, the oldest wine-producing village in Bordeaux, and home to the legendary estates of Pavy and Angelou. On the left bank, where I'm driving through, are Grave et Medoc, where the largely flat land and gravelly soil give the local wines their distinct quality. The first stop in our wine tour is Chateau Serran in the appellation of Margot. And if you remember our wine introduction at the Cité du Van, you know that this is on the left bank of the Garonne River in a region called the Medoc. Well, I was here a few months ago while the grapes were growing on the vine and I'm back after the harvest to check on the 2017 vintage. So let's meet the winemaker. Hello, Eduard. Hello, David. Good to be back. I was here a few months ago, remember? So nice to see you. Yes, yes. Welcome back. Is it good news? Sion. Good news for you? I mean, it, 2017 vintage looking good? It's a, it's a very, it's a good news. It was, okay. uh, it was a tricky year because we started on a, on a difficult note with the frost of right. April 26 mm -hmm. and April 27. But uh, it turned out uh, for the Margot appellation and from, for also uh, others appellation in the, in the area as a very nice near year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that the years in seven had kind of bad luck yeah. historically, yeah. but like, we can say that this year for the property, we were not caught by the frost. It breaks we, the curse. This it breaks, breaks the, the curse. curse. <laughs> yes, we, we are going to do a very nice 2017. 2017 was a dangerous one. A wicked frost at the start of the year threatened the vineyards and heavy rains just before the harvest in September, added more stress. Lucky for Siran though, the Cabernet, Merlot, and Petit Verdot vines, the key grapes in their blend were spared. This is after the harvest, it was going I've to just come as those grapes are done fermenting, from grape juice to wine. So that's how you do it. You just yeah. put your glass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the sugar is gone, so this is basically the wine, all right? Yep. It's not, it's not sweet grape juice. It's just like exactly. the beginnings can... of the 2017 vintage. Exactly. And as you can see, you have color, concentration. Mm -hmm. If you start smelling, no, a very pure fruit. This is as pure as it gets yeah. for a wine this young. The wine still needs to go through more steps before it's blended and matured in oak casks and then finally bottled. But at, at this point, you can already tell. Yes. The, yes. the basic outline of the 2017 vintage. Yes. And what does it look like? It's, it's, what are the it's characteristics? Fruity, it's fruity, there is concentration, Good. there is length. Good. There is everything you need. Don't forget that wine before everything is pleasure. It has to give pleasure to our customers. And for that, you need to have a fruit at perfect maturity. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and on 2017, we were able to harvest a perfect fruit at maturity wow. for the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Merlot and the Petit Verdot. Okay. So this is why we can say that when the fermentation alcoholic is finished there, we're going to have something very nice. It will still take some years to fully appreciate the quality of the 2017 vintage but you can certainly enjoy the previous vintages with a vertical wine tasting session at the Chateau's wine shop. In good weather, tastings are also held at the winery's terrace, overlooking the vineyards where the grapes used to create the blends were harvested. Chateau tours aren't always as technical, of course, and Siran's small but well-curated museum of antique objet du vin is an entertaining diversion. This here is my favorite part of the museum. It's the family collection of wine pitchers. These are antiques, they're collectibles, very rare and very beautiful. 
collected over the years, over the decades, by the ancestors of Edouard. His ancestors were originally wine brokers, but later purchased the property in the middle of the 19th century. Edouard represents a seventh generation of winemakers in the family, one that's closely connected to our own country. His great-grandmother was born in Manila, where the family still manages some properties. That's why the Philippine flag flies over Chateau Ciron so proudly. If you're doing a wine tour, you want to live as close to the vineyards as possible. That way you experience life the way a local winemaker and his family would. Now, Chateau Ciron also offers a bed and breakfast of sorts. This one behind me. Now, the wife of Edouard, Severine, is going to show me what it looks like. The Chalet Ciron is surrounded by vineyards and only 30 minutes away from Bordeaux city and less than an hour from the ocean. It's a good base for exploring the region. Sure, there are grand chateau for rent in Bordeaux, but a charming country cottage like this is absolutely perfect if you want to experience authentic village life in Margot. Because that's exactly what Ciron is living, breathing village, not a lifeless corporate farm, a close-knit community held together by a love for the land, a common faith in history. Up the road from Siran is another beautiful property set amidst one of the most precious vineyards in the world. If this looks familiar, it probably is. And if you're a wine enthusiast, you'll immediately recognize it as the same chateau that appears on the label of the legendary winemaker Chateau Margot. Chateau Margot needs little introduction. The historic estate produces the legendary first growth classified wines, the highest level possible in Bordeaux. The property is among the oldest and largest in Margot, and one of the most picturesque too. Over 80 hectares of vineyards produce the prized Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and Petit Verdot grapes used in the Grand Vent, Chateau Margaux, and its second wine, Pavillon Rouge. Like most chateaux, Margaux offers tours of their cellars, but only by appointment. Much of it is new, redesigned in 2015 by Pritzker Prize-winning architect Sir Norman Foster the only major renovation in more than two centuries. This is Chateau Margaux's cellar. Basically, it's the treasure room of the chateau. And what you see behind me would be the entire output for 2016. It's the vintage for that year. And the wine is aging in a barrel from 18 to 24 months. Now, here's another interesting piece of information. Chateau Margaux has its own barrel maker, yes. Partly that's to ensure that the quality of the barrels is intact, but also because they want to make sure that the knowledge and the craft of barrel making is preserved across generations. That's not entirely necessary, but it shows the estate's attention to the most minute details of the winemaking process. Details that find their way into every bottle of Chateau Margaux, arguably the most consistent wine produced in Bordeaux. You're letting the terroir speak for itself. But if there's a consistency across the years, across the decades, and for Margot, across the centuries even maybe, what would that be? What is that commonness? So what we, of course, it's part of the culture of the estate, probably not only given by the terroir. Of course, we are part of the terroir, I would say. So, so. And uh, it's always, uh, I would say, elegance. It means that uh, everything is very well integrated. You Cannot see, you cannot see any details in the wine, you know, you taste the wine a whole, mm -hmm. and it's just, if, if, if you pay attention, you see the complexity, you see the small, very details of, uh, of, the, of the, the perfume, but, but, but the nose is a perfume, it's not uh, flavors, you know, it's just a perfume, and you are seduced or not, but you, it's very difficult to analyze and to, uh, to, to, to see which, which type of flavors, you know, because it's just a perfume, and on the palate, it's the same, it's just, uh, just a feeling, very delicate. 
it's been very called pleasant. the feminine. A Who feminine says that? Line. Yes, feminine. Because I and would yet say there's that power. It's, it's never aggressive. You know, it's powerful, but never aggressive. Of course, that's also achieved because of the techniques, the experience of the of the estate. Techniques, not so much. You know, we we can no, no, yeah, we we can make wine today. The best wines are made exactly in the same way as one century ago. So it's not you all know, about science and technique no. and skills. The tec technology, of course, helped a lot when you have bad bad vintages, okay. bad conditions, or bad blocks. So it's very helpful to uh, when you have uh, bad conditions or bad bad soils. But uh, when, especially at Chateau Margaux, everything is, you know, wonderful. No, we have to do a very, uh, I would say, almost nothing. So there's very little it's intervention. Just, yeah, and, and we make the, the wine exactly, of course, with much more control, but with the same uh, philosophy and the same tools. In the winemaking itself, with the same tools as uh, one century ago. In an age of disruption, Chateau Margaux takes a different approach, with a winemaking philosophy that's rooted in a deep respect for the natural environment and local traditions. It's wisdom one would only fully understand with time spent in the historic communes and vineyards of Bordeaux. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Saldran in Bordeaux. Thanks for watching.